you violated the public trust, in my view, and by uh, uh, failing and refusing to perform the duties of your office. So, Mr. Attorney General, it's more with uh, sorrow than, uh, uh, than regret, uh, than anger, that I would say that you leave me no alternative but to join those that call upon you to resign your office. So I don't have any intention of resigning. Uh, I heard the White House press officer say yesterday that the president has absolute confidence in me. I don't have any reason to believe that that, in fact, is not, uh, is not the case. Explosive testimony in the Senate Tuesday, Attorney General Eric Holder pushing back against calls that he stepped down amid accusations that he's blocking independent investigation into intelligence leaks. Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso is part of the Senate leadership as chairman of the Republican Policy Committee. He's also a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. He joins us now. Senator Barrasso, thank you so much for coming on the program. You voted against Eric Holder uh, when he was up for nomination. Do you share Mr. Corn's concerns? Do you agree with him? Uh, I haven't gone as far as Senator uh, Cornyn has gone, but I have great concerns about Eric Holder, the positions that he's taken. He's been very reluctant to come forward uh, with uh, the, the information on the Fast and Furious program, which was terribly bungled by, by his Justice Department, a, a true tragedy with loss of life. Uh, and now what we have are these releases that appear to come from the White House that look, make the president look like he's uh, you know kind of macho man uh, in the run-up to the election. I think these have also caused loss of life uh, and significant security breaches to our nation. And I think we ought to have an independent counsel. Uh, Senator Brasso, do you think intelligence leaks from the White House have caused loss of life? Well, I absolutely do. When you take a look at what's happening overseas, perhaps not of American citizens, uh, but, but of others and of putting our people at risk. I mean, you, you take a look at what's happened with the, the, the uh, the leaks regarding uh, the, the computer virus in, in Iran. Uh, you talk about that doctor who is now imprisoned uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Pakistan uh, who uh, aided in helping identify the location of Osama bin Laden. You take a look at the uh, release of the information about the new terrorist technique, kind of the underwear bomber, the upgraded mm -hmm. version about that. And I think it doesn't serve any president well to have the president making the, uh, having the word come out that the president is making the calls of his hit list of who he wants to have uh, eliminated, assassinated, killed. I don't think that helps any president. But that's not executive leadership? Is that what you elect a president for? Well, I think that the attorney general ought to go ahead and come up with uh, an independent counsel, someone who will look into this independently, not people that report mm -hmm. directly to him. Uh, we've had this through administrations, Republican and Democrat alike. Uh, and I think if, if it's the attorney general's goal to protect the president, then he wants everybody reporting to him. If we really want to get to the truth of these releases that I believe emanated from the White House, it doesn't say that President Obama knew about them, but I believe they have come from the Obama mm -hmm. White House, then I think the American public has a right to an independent investigation, not one where the attorney general ultimately decides what information gets released and what doesn't get released, Luke. Senator, uh, you are a doctor, Mitt Romney, and you've been very vocal, uh, vocal uh, and outspoken against health care reform, the, the law the president put in place. Mitt Romney said this uh, about repealing it recently. We're going to have to make sure that the law we replace Obamacare with assures that people who have a pre-existing condition, who've been insured in the past, are able to get insurance in the future so they don't have to worry about that condition keeping them from getting the kind of health care they deserve. That sounds awfully familiar with what President Obama was saying. Which parts of the law would you keep, Senator Barrasso? Well, first, I would repeal the entire law and then start in a step-by-step -step fashion. I'm hoping that the Supreme Court does that work uh, for us in the next two weeks when they come out with their ruling, because I don't think that the government has a right to come into people's homes and say they must buy a government-approved program. But when you get specifically to pre-existing conditions, Luke, you know, my, my wife is a breast cancer survivor. She's been through three operations, two bouts of chemotherapy, all the radiation. We know that people with pre-existing conditions still need to get insurance, still need to get care. What the president did, though, was force through Congress on party line votes a 2,700-page bill, too voluminous to be read, too incoherent to be understood, 
and instead we ought to be working on ways to make sure that people get the care that they need from a doctor that they choose, not that the government chooses, but that they choose at lower cost. Those are the things well, we should have been working on, and we know that what this president's law has done is actually driven up the costs faster and higher than if no law has been passed in the first place. Would you allow kids to stay on their parents' plans up until age 26? Well, absolutely. And actually, I said that, Luke, the day of the president's roundtable discussion at the White House in which I participated. I wanted to do that from the beginning. There are so many things that you can do working together instead of the president's one size fits all, his way or the highway approach. But then, Senator, why, um, so not, then why not keep in place the parts you like and just change the parts you don't? Why do you have to have a full repeal and, 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 and stop the law, stopping kids from being on their parents' plans at 26, stopping denial for pre existing conditions? Why stop all of that and not just just let it go well, forward you know, and Luke, take parts of the pack you don't want. You know, that's not going to stop. You have all of these major insurance companies that have already said uh, whatever the Supreme Court rules, they're going to allow those, uh, those people up to age 26 to stay on their family plans. But under the president's health care law, Luke, kids who are in college today who have gotten their insurance not through a family plan but through the, insur through the, uh, the colleges are not going to be able to do that. You have lots of colleges dropping their insurance because under the president's mandates and the high level of insurance they need is a lot more than any college student needs or wants or can afford. Colleges are saying, oh my goodness, the, the costs are going to go up by a factor of 10 in some places. And colleges are saying, on top of rising tuitions, we don't want to add that additional mm -hmm. cost. So we're no longer going to even offer students affordable insurance. Why aren't they students allowed to get affordable insurance? Because of the president's President's health care law. Senator Barrasso from Wyoming, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Always a pleasure. Hey, thanks for having me, Luke.